I'm very, very lazy. I love to sit in a chair and look out the window and do nothing. We didn't know that mother had gone through a passionate love affair or that father suffered from severe depression. Mother was preparing to break out of her marriage, father threatening to take his own life. For me, the human face is the most important subject of the cinema. Film as dream, film as music. No art passes our conscience in the way film does, and goes directly to our feelings, deep down into the dark rooms of our souls. The anger and the creativity are so closely intertwined with me, and there's plenty of anger left. If I didn't have my profession, I think I would be sitting in a nut house. But I have been unceasingly at work, and this has been very healthy for me, so I had no need for therapy. I have a feeling of complete balance. The sea, the house, the loneliness, the light. Everything is clearer, much more precise. I have the feeling that I am living on a limit, and I'm crossing that limit sometimes. I am normally afraid of birds and have never dreamt of any bird in my life. My pictures are always part of my thinking, and my emotions, tensions, dreams, desires. I write scripts to serve as skeletons awaiting the flesh and sinew of images. The smallest wound or pain of the ego is examined under a microscope as if it were of eternal importance. The artist considers his isolation, his subjectivity, his individualism almost holy. Aging is not uncomplicated. Creativity is an extraordinary help against destructive demons. In The Serpent's Egg, I created a Berlin which no one recognized, not even I. The doors between the old man today and the child are still open, wide open. I can stroll through my grandmother's house and know exactly where the pictures are, the furniture was, how it looked, the voice, the smells. I can move from my bed at night today to my childhood in less than a second. I haven't put an ounce of effort into my families. I never have. I think that for some time now I have been living with an anxiety which has had no tangible cause. It has been like having a toothache without the conscientious dentist having been able to find anything wrong with the tooth or with the person as a whole. I throw a spear into the darkness. That is intuition. Then I must send an army into the darkness to find the spear. That is intellect. I was very much in love with my mother. She was a very warm and a very cold woman. When she was warm, I tried to come close to her, but she could be very cold and rejecting. There is something joyous about not talking. Not a day has gone by in my life when I haven't thought about death. If I don't create, I don't exist. I am forever living in my childhood. I hope I never get so old I get religious. When you finish a film, you never want to see it again. When you're as chaotic as I am, you need a very firm structure in your life. I make all my decisions on intuition. I am very shy with people I don't know. I hate to travel. I don't go anywhere. 
Writing is boring, very boring, and it takes so much patience. People ask what are my intentions with my films, my aims. It is a difficult and dangerous question, and I usually give an evasive answer. I try to tell the truth about the human condition, the truth as I see it. This answer seems to satisfy everyone, but it is not quite correct. There hasn't been anyone with whom I can discuss my scripts. Even when the film is done, there is no one I can show it to who gives his sincere opinion. There is silence. The only thing I consider appalling would be to suddenly become a vegetable and a burden on other people, a soul slowly dying out, trapped in a body in which the insides gradually sabotage me that, I think, would be terrifying. Everything is worth precisely as much as a belch, the difference being that a belch is more satisfying. I always work with 18 friends. I am autobiographical in the way a dream transforms experience and emotions, all the time. The demons are innumerable, appear at the most inconvenient times, and create panic and terror, but I have learned that if I can master the negative forces and harness them to my chariot, then they can work to my advantage. I usually say I left puberty at 58. I had a bad conscience until I discovered that having a bad conscience about something so gravely serious as leaving your children is an affectation, a way of achieving a little suffering that can't for a moment be equal to the suffering you've caused. Mother was actually a great doer and organizer. All the special occasions were directed by mother. When I'm on Pharaoh, I'm never lonely. When we came out from the Elysee Palace, there was a gigantic limousine waiting for us and four police on motorcycles. It is probably one of the few times I have experienced my fame. I thought it was so fantastic that I laughed to the point of shouting. I don't watch my own films very often. I become so jittery and ready to cry, and miserable. I think it's awful. I dream about doing a film about once a week. We always regret that we did not ask our parents more really get to know them while they were alive. Now I want to make it plain that the virgin spring must be regarded as an aberration. It's touristic, a lousy imitation of Kurosawa. From an early age onward, it was said that Ingmar has no sense of humor. I am extremely suspicious of dreams, apparitions, and visions, both in literature and in films and plays. Perhaps it's because mental excesses of this sort smack too much of being arranged. I have such difficulty calming down my stomach, my head, reality, everything. That is the reason I live in Pharaoh. There are so many books I want to read. Difficult books. That's what I intend to do and what I'm longing for. Sometimes, I probably do more in the fact that I no longer make films. I have always appreciated the honest brutality of the international film world. One need never doubt one's worth in the market. Mine was zero. I was booed at the premiere of Miss Julie, a remarkably stimulating experience. If I let myself go, 
nothing will get done. My education was very tough. Life wasn't about freeing up human souls. It was about creating obedient slaves in the hierarchical construction of the society with God at the top, then the king, and then the father. I was bloody ill-tempered when I was young. The individualists stare into each other's eyes and yet deny each other's existence. We walk in circles, so limited by our own anxieties that we can no longer distinguish between true and false, between the gangster's whim and the purest ideal. On a personal level, there are many people who have meant a great deal to me. My father and mother were certainly of vital importance, not only in themselves, but because they created a world for me to revolt against. I am very much aware of my own double self. The well-known one is very under control. Everything is planned and very secure. The unknown one can be very unpleasant. I think this side is responsible for all the creative work he is in touch with the child. He is not rational. He is impulsive and extremely emotional. When I was young, I was extremely scared of dying. But now I think it a very, very wise arrangement. It's like a light that is extinguished. Not very much to make a fuss about.